Hey guys, this is Nick, and welcome to my Linux experiment. Backup solutions are a dime a dozen on Windows or Mac OS X, but on Linux, not so much. So I think it's time we take a look at my favorite system backup and restore tool, and this is called TimeShift. So let's take a look at what it can do, how it works, right after this. This video is brought to you by Safing's Portmaster. Safing is an open source company which aims to help users protect their privacy and focus on transparency. They develop the Portmaster, a privacy suite that lets you protect your network usage and give you system-wide ad and tracking blocking capabilities. It's open source, completely modular, and lets you see what the system is trying to send and block it either on a global setting or on a per-app basis. The Portmaster is and will always be free, and it gives you a super practical dashboard where you can monitor your general security level and status, and you can dive into the various connections your device is trying to make, like here the Epic Game Store calling some unwanted tracking URL. That's where you can move to the global and app settings and block any type of connection or set up filter lists. The Portmaster is still under development and is in alpha, but you can download it for free from safing.io. You can also ask anything you'd like to the Safing team, either on Reddit, via email, Twitter, or through the Reddit AMA, which will take place on the 18th to the 25th of September. Try Portmaster for yourself and let the team know what you think. Okay, so what is TimeShift? TimeShift is a system backup and restore tool designed to restore your system, your Linux distribution, into a usable state after something went wrong, maybe you went tinkering too much, or you installed something you shouldn't have, or you just plain old broken it. You animal. TimeShift is not, however, intended to back up your user config files. It is designed to grab a copy of your system files as a snapshot and to restore that snapshot over any system files that you have. It leaves your slash home folder completely untouched, which means that you can restore your system and not lose any progress or any work that you've done. You just restore everything else to its previous state. Obviously, as all good backup solutions, the snapshots are incremental, which means the first one will be the biggest, and the next ones will only take what has changed from the previous ones, so they will be smaller and smaller in size if your system doesn't change all that much. So what features does it have? Well, TimeShift has two modes, one based on rsync and one based on btrfs or butterfs or betterfs, however you want to call it. The rsync mode uses, you guessed it, rsync as a tool to copy the files and hard links to avoid duplicating all files on each snapshot. Snapshots creating using rsync can be browsed using a file manager since they are just copies of your files. Now this is pretty handy because it allows you to just grab the one file that you want to restore by just browsing the whole snapshot. So maybe you messed up your grub configuration and you just want to restore that. You navigate the snapshot, grab the file, copy paste it over the last one and you're good to go. The second mode based on btrfs uses this file system's native backup and restore features. You obviously need to have a BDRFS file system to make use of that mode, but there are some advantages to it. These snapshots can be restored in seconds because they are a perfect copy byte for byte of your system, when the rsync backups might take a lot more time. They also tend to use a lot less space. Now, once you've chosen your backup and restore mode, you can decide what backup strategy you want. Hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or at boot. The more snapshots you store, the more disk space you're going to use, so choose something appropriate and don't go all over the top. Now by default, TimeShift will store all those snapshots on a slash TimeShift folder in your main partition. So this is going to increase the size you're using on your main partition, basically double it at least. So I would highly encourage you to store these backups on a completely separate partition, or even better, on a separate hard drive disk, and you'll see why in a minute. Finally, you can also choose how many snapshots you want to keep for each level. So you could choose to keep four hourly snapshots, two weekly snapshots, and one monthly one. The older snapshots will get deleted automatically. Where TimeShift gets really interesting though, is how it can restore your data. Because it can restore your previous system partition that you've backed up over another distribution entirely. Which means that, for example, you've used Ubuntu and you liked it, but you wanted to try something else. You installed another distribution and your distro hopping woes have started. You don't really like what you've ended up with. Well, since you backed up your Ubuntu distro using TimeShift, you just install TimeShift on the new distribution and restore your old system over the new one. And in almost every single case, it's going to work just fine and restore your complete system, and you'll just have to reboot on your previous partition. It's just that simple. Now, it also means that you can restore a system that is not in a bootable state. You just install or create a live USB, install TimeShift on the live USB, and restore your previous snapshot over the non-working system that you have, and you're good to go. It is a super powerful tool to ensure that you can restore a system to a workable state whatever horrible mistake or horrible mistreatment you've inflicted on it. Now, since TimeShift doesn't backup any of your user files or config files, 
It means that restoring will not erase any of your work, but it also means that these files won't be backed up. You can add them to the snapshots, but it is really not recommended because this means that if you restore a whole snapshot, you're going to erase some applications, databases, config files, your work files, anything that you've worked on will be restored to the previous snapshot as well. So just make sure that you back up stuff that you don't really use that often because anything that changes daily will probably be lost. Now the team has also taken into account encrypted home folders and will back up your .ecryptfs folder, which means that when you restore your snapshot, if you had an encrypted home partition, you won't have any issues with that, it's just going to pick up where you left off. Timeshift also doesn't plan backups at a specific time of day, it just aims to do a backup daily, so if it hadn't had time to do it previously, it's just going to do the next time the computer boots up and you'll be safe, so you're not missing any backup if your computer isn't turned on. Timeshift supports multiple configurations, including Grub2, EFI, but it won't work using Docker containers, so if you plan to use it to backup a server, then you're gonna have to find another solution. And that's about it for Timeshift. It's a fantastic backup solution that's going to help you erase any horrible mistake you've made on your system. It will probably save your life if you're using a rolling release where updates come daily and have the potential to break your system immediately. And it's just super simple to use and very safe. For your user files though, you will have to turn to another solution as Timeshift doesn't back them up, so probably take a look at Back in Time or any other single backup solution. Maybe I'll make a video about these sometime. Now, Timeshift is open source and free, but you can donate to the developers using their website, I'll leave a link in the description below, using PayPal or Bitcoin. You can also install it on any Ubuntu-based distributions thanks to their PPA, and it's also available in the AUR, so users of Manjaro, Arch, Endeavor OS, or whatever other Arch derivative they use, they're going to be able to install that in one click. I think it's also shipped as default with Manjaro. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. If you didn't, then you can thumbs down. If you really did enjoy the video, you can help support the channel by joining my amazing Patreon supporters and YouTube members, and get access to a monthly patron cast and the right to vote on the next topics I will work on during my videos. So check it out using the links in the description below. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!